Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Um, it is with a heavy heart and with also great respect that I acknowledge the passing and the transition of Baba Dick Gregory on today. Uh, I believe it's, yeah, today, the uh, 19th of August. To his family, to his wife, to his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, know that you come from the loins of one of the most powerful, funniest, um, intellectual, informative, well, what other adjective can I describe it with? Crazy, but committed man of our generation, of our time. He will go down with the greats. He is uh, such, he was such an inspiration to all that came in contact with him, all whose lives he has touched. And for that, y'all should be so proud. I have a Dick Gregory story. And I believe it was 1967. Or, yeah, I believe it was 67 or 68 that um, Dick Gregory came to Milwaukee. And we marched with him and Father Grappa. He was all in the hood with us over on uh, wow we marched over on the south side but I remember him being on 6th street on well he was in the hood just put it that way and I was barely 10 years old at that time but comedian Dick Gregory who was a soldier he fought the good fight and he was a person that lived a life that he talked about, and he was about it. Uh, Dick Gregory also ran for president, I believe, in nineteen in in the late sixties. Sixty eight must have been the sixty eight election. Um, and he uh, and he wrote a book uh, back then called "Write Me In," which. Um, I have privy to say that I have this book, um, and I've had it since uh, the early 70s. Uh, I tried to get Dick to sign it, and uh, but uh, I don't know if he can. But this is the book. This book has so much insight to it. It's called Write Me In, again, by Dick Gregory, and I thought I'd share as a tribute to my brother on this evening. I don't want to be sad. I want to look at a life well lived. I want to look at a life well well used by God. The God force in him to uplift us, to educate us um, and to make us better people and make us better human. Make us better as a society. I think that's what Dick Gregory spent his life doing. And so I'm going to read an excerpt from his book, Write Me In, which was, again, uh, published, I believe, in 1968. Yeah, June of 1968. And it is brought in only a way that the Baba can bring it. And it's called The Double Standard. And remember, this is what Dick Gregory says. We're talking about uh, almost 50 years ago when he ran for president. And this was his comment on the double standard of America. So, okay, he goes, there is an insane double standard to America's violence. In Orangeburg, South Carolina, three black kids were killed on the college campus. 
The slaughter was rationalized and justified by saying that the students were unruly. For the past 10 years, white college students have been going to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, every spring and just tearing up the town. Not one of them has ever been shot. Now, I'm not saying start shooting white folks to justify the killing of black folks. Nor am I saying that this country cannot kill black folk. I am just warning you that the nation had better prepare itself to understand our attitude after black folk after black folk are being killed. Consider what it means for police to shoot into a college campus, first of all. Have you ever read where the police shot into a whorehouse or gunned down a group of pimps standing on the street corner? When the mafia had its big meeting in Appalachia, New York, the police didn't shoot into the meeting room, but they will shoot into a group of black college kids and think nothing of it. Understand the insult of America's double standard. Muhammad Ali has lost his world heavyweight championship title before he goes to jail. But Jimmy Hoffa didn't lose his job until he was placed behind bars. Senator Dodd still has a job. But Adam Clayton Powell lost his congressional seat. That is an insult. And black folks are angry. Moral pollution has affected America's ability to tell the truth. I would rather say lying represents. I mean, I would say. I would rather say lying represents a basic immorality. Than to give it a sweet sounding name like credibility gap. When Dwight Eisenhower was president, a U-2 plane was shot down. Our national leader went on television talking about you what? Ike said he'd never heard of the U-2 plane. The terrifying element in the U-2 incident was not so much that Ike lied, but that this nation is sick enough to have gone to war over that lie. Our ambassador sat in the United Nations denying that we had used these U-2 flighters, while the Russians sat right next to him assembling the parts, not to mention that they had the pilot. Or take the Pablo incidents. The president came on national television and said that the Pablo was 20 miles out on international water. The next day, he said it was 16 miles out. Finally, it got down to 12 miles. I expected to pick up, pick up the paper any day now and see where Pablo had dropped the anchor. This little... Well, that little excerpt I just read was from his statements um, on, uh, on uh, the double standard. And, and this book is full of little tidbits that give you an insight into Dick Gregory's mind. There was another one that stated, um, I love this one. And this was in chapter three. And he says, this nation is insane. I want y'all to remember, this is 1968. 1968. This is how brilliant and uh, uh, how, how can you say it? A, a, a foreseer, a trailblazer, a pioneer, a forerunner, a, a, a watchman at the tower. This is how uh, this is how much Baba knew. America is faced with a pollution crisis. Air and water and pollution are making our land uninhabitable. In New York City, just breathing the air has the cancer-producing benzoprene equivalent to smoking two packages of cigarettes a day. It is exclaimed that air pollution was responsible for 80% of the rise in deaths from respiratory diseases from 1930 to 1960. Chemicals and pesticides in the atmosphere 
are exterminating both pests and people, and there are currently approximately 20 tons of DDT in the bodies of the American people. This year, the 90 million motor vehicles in use will burn an estimated 60 billion gases of gasoline, or about 700 gallons of the typical for the typical automobile. This means that each automobile in the country will discharge a single year of over 1,600 pounds of carbon monoxide, 200 pounds of hydrocarbons, and 77 pounds of oxides and nitrogen. 50 million Americans will drink water that does not meet public health service drinking water standards, and an additional 45 million Americans will drink water that has not been tested. The murky, congested air destroys crops from six dollars to from six to ten million annually in California alone. Erodes the machinery, raises the cleaning costs, and make make milk unmarkable, which for comes from the cows breathing the polluted DDT filled air. But the number one problem facing this country today is not the air and the water problem. It is a moral pollution. <laughs> America is totally infected with the moral pollution that is demonstrated by this nation's preoccupation with violence. Let me say this again. America is totally infected with a moral pollution and it is demonstrated by the nation's preoccupation with violence. I am often questioned about talking about violence when I'm supposed to be nonviolent. For the record, I am nonviolent. I am nonviolent. I am um I am non I am a nonviolent vegetarian pacifist. But there is no way to honestly assess the American social and political scene and not speak on violence. America is a very, very, very violent country. Matt Dillon comes into America's home every week teaching citizens that it is a virtue to shoot straight. The United States Constitution gives the man a right to carry a gun in his home. We are indeed a violent nation. Though I am committed to nonviolence, I do not force my philosophy on anyone else. There is nothing any man can do to me to make me kill him or inflict personal injury upon him. But that is my own personal hang-up. I do not preach nonviolence as the only alternative. I am a vegetarian because I do not believe animals should be killed. But I will never knock a stake out of another person's hand like I wouldn't do it because I am known to be nonviolent. every summer when the riot season begins people call me asking if I will come and cool the black folks off and I repeat I give them the answer like hell I didn't heat them up and I'm certainly not going to be anywhere to cool their asses off. Straight out of the mind of Baba Dick Gregory. Rest in peace, brother. My love is with you. And now you are a miss covering us all. Be blessed.